Right, hi guys, welcome back. Part two, we're gonna do some turning. So, now before I start, I've got my bit, that's my bit I prepared earlier and I got all glued up. The one you see me do was this one, okay? I did mean to say at the time, if you haven't got band saw, then you can do all this with a hand saw. You'll just have to come in and in there and do it a little fret saw as well. You can get, get round for the edges. Uh, so you can do it with a hand saw, it just take you a little bit more time. Any of you keen-eyed people that might have noticed, yes, I did drill the holes in the wrong place when I put it there. Not used to videoing and doing and, oh, uh, yeah, whatever. I, I wouldn't normally mark that up first. I would normally have cut it and then put my marks on and drilled it. But I just put a couple little bits of uh, dowel in, glued them in, sanded it across and put my holes in the right place. That's, got, that's underneath anyway, and anyone that wants to look underneath, well, that's up to them, but... So that got that, just for you keen-eyed that are gonna say, you drilled that in the wrong place. Well, yeah, I know. That was just so I could show you what to do if you happen to do that. <laughs> I like to cover everything. Right, uh, got me bits here. I'm gonna mount this between centers and we're gonna turn the body first. Now, because I've already done this, I'm just turning, I want it two inches fixed, so I'm gonna turn it to just round. And obviously, I'm gonna use my carbide tools. Now, I won't lie, the other ones the other day, the other two I turned, they were done with my skew and my spindle gouge. Um, but this is about using carbide chisels, so I'm going to just show you how you can do it with your carbide chisels. Just probably means we're doing less sanding. So there you go. Right, <laughs> let's get going. Right, melt between centers. Actually, I want it to go. Yeah, no, I do want to go around that way. That's okay. Right. Okay. Right, now I want to get this to basically just round. And for that, I'm going to use my little square. 14 mil square on the round bar. Okay. Let that spin up. Go a little bit faster than that. There we go. Right. Tools rolled over. Lisa's going to get covered. <laughs> so I'm just going to dip me dip myself up so I don't get all sawdust down in it. Right, there we go. got a little bit I want it to be just round and move the two rest in nearly not blocking you am I no. Not round yet. Well, no, actually, I might be. But let's have a look. I keep going, feeling it and thinking it's not round. It is round. Look, it's because I've got that. <laughs> still, I've got that. I feel it. Feel. Oh yeah, it's still rough, but it's not. It's because I've got a thing. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's where we are now. Got to be careful now because I don't want to go below this for the waist. We've got to put his waist in, and it's got to be just below this here. So. I'm gonna do put myself a pencil mark in. Okay. Nice dark line. That's it. And just so I know for definite, this is where the neckline is. 
So I'm going to come in with a chamfer there and then the head will just roll round. And that's going to be where the waste is. I'm going to use the parting tool for that and I'm going to be doing that first off. Right. Now, just a quick one. Because a couple of people have had my parting tools and they, they're having trouble getting to use them. Now, with this, because it's a saw blade, let me just let me just take this, lift this up, take this off from me. All right, this is gonna hold that. Because it's a saw blade, uh, the teeth are set at an angle. They normally would have a point on them. So I have to take that point off, which I do with the diamond file. But you do have a slight chamfer on on the metal here. It's meant to be there, that's how the saw blade is. Right, when you come in, you can't come just in straight with it because it's natural, it wants to go up. Don't lower your tool rest down, it's way above centre. All you have to do is come up, lift the tool up and head for centre and it comes in. Very easy and works efficient, efficiently. So I'll show you now. Right, now this is just his waistband for the belt. So it doesn't have to be too deep. Okay, so I'll just come up. There it is. And that's it, that's, our, that's what I want, it's just three belts. There you go. That's his belt line. Oh, I'm gonna put uh just gonna put a little mark here. Just so I know where I want that chamfer to come in. Right now, I'm gonna use my detail chisel. Oh, how'd you like the snazzy new handle I made <laughs> myself? I made a pair of them. Got a long handle and a short handle. And I've made them so I can, because uh, as you know, I've got no more right, no more space to put tools up. So I've actually put a couple of grub screws and I can just change the bars and put the bars where I want. Right. I'm going to use the detail chisel, I'm just going to roll this over. Yeah. So all I want to do, just roll it over slightly. Down there, rolled over slightly. That's it. Right, now I've got to come in here. I'm gonna go for a V at the moment, but this is mainly the chance for here, which is for his mouth. That's it. Like that. You know, you think the chance for didn't you? So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Now I'm just gonna grab my. 9mm round, I think it's just a round. Yeah. Right. Like that. Round that over. Round this. This is the head. Right over to so get a nice clean cut in. Finish with it right over. Give you that real crisp cut. Just like that. Right, gonna come around a little bit. A little bit of a shift, cut, and here. Just to refine that little shape there. And that's it. Right, just give a little shear. Put in there. Put in here, just gonna come up. 
Right round. And then uh, we're going to taper this slightly on this one, weren't we? Yeah. That's it. We can only go a little bit. That just gives a slight taper to him, so he's got a bit of a chest. Big foot soldier. <laughs> that's it. All right, that's that done. We just need to use the parting tool just to clean that inside a little bit. Right, that's it. And I think what I'm going to do, uh, I've got to take nine more around a minute. I'm just going to take a slight chamfer on this bottom. That's it. That make that nice. Right, that's it. That's the body done. It's as uh, simple as that. Right, a little bit sanding. Like I say, because I've used the carbide, don't really need it. But... Oh, dust extractor. Look at some of this dust. Okay, that's the body done. So that's our body. Okay, like that. And like I said, that's where the holes are that are going to hold your bit. And then we're going to have a hat on top of that. His mouth's going to be in there. That's his waistband. And his legs are going to go on the bottom. So now we're going to turn the legs. So I'm going to quick change here. Went to, um, oh, let me take that off for a second. Went to Snain, Snainton Snainton Woodworking Supplies the other day. Fantastic for wood turning stuff. They got loads of stuff. I bought, I ended up buying three new chucks while I was there. <laughs> but this is the S, SC2. Lovely little chuck. Comes with these little jaws. But I'm going to put this, I made my own light pull drive. I make my own ones because I just do that on my, I've, said before I've got a metal lathe so I just make these things up for myself same with my uh, handles I've been been wanting to to get a uh, a handle where I can just slot my bars in and out but all these handles come with these big gnarled nuts on here that you have to do and I wanted a nice slim fit so I made my own one and that can take all my bars now. I can just slot them all in and out. And the hollows, the handle's hollowed down quite a way because that steel shaft goes down that far inside. So I can adjust the length of my bar as I want. So I made myself a couple of these. These are not for sale on my website. These are, um, fortunately, just mine. I spoiled myself. And I did the long handle one as well. This can take, and it gives a nice bit of weight put three screws on that to secure it and this can have a bar out to there so again it's hollowed right down here so but I quite often I like to hold my handle here that's why I don't like these ones with a big sort of nuts for quick release I've looked at the quick release ones and I, I don't like the idea of that nut being there because I as I say quite a lot of the time if I'm working up here I tend to hold here so I like something nice and they work perfect yeah lovely oh and that's the 10 mil AU cutter on the round bar. That's gonna be available in the uh, spindle turning sets that have the round bar. I'm gonna be doing a 10 mil AU cutter on there. Um, I already got it on the shear cut. And if you've got the shear cut hollowers, it's already there, but it's mounted at 45. But with this one, I like it because doing spindle work, I can roll it back and forwards quite, quite nicely. So yeah, anyway, that'll be available as a spindle turning chisel on the website. 
Right, I'm going to change this one, this live centre, because I also made myself a, a live centre, the same, like a light pull. And then this fits on there. And that one oh, fits inside there. And now I've just got a friction drive. So, which if you're using this skew chisel, is perfect, because if you do get a catch, it will just spin. So, if you get a catch. Right, sorry, small tool rest. But again, if you're using your car by chisels, our, I say, or our high demonstrate you should be using them, my chisels anyway, I'm not saying other people's, but my ones, then you won't get a catch. So you'll be okay. Right, okay, we've got that, enough talking. Otherwise, I'll run out of time on my video. Right, let's go. We've got to do a leg. So, drop it down. Oh, that's a little bit noisy, that live centre. Just give it a slight tighten. Right, now I've got to be 16 mil down this end. That's noisy, that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I think the bearings are going in that one. I remember why I had that in the bag now. Oh, oh yeah, look, it's come apart. <coughs> It just slots on that bearing, see? It just slots on there. And I think that bearing might be uh, a bit on its way out. So we'll leave that one for the moment because it's a bit noisy and I can't be doing with that noise. I'll go to my uh, normal point centre. I can't be doing with that noise. Right, okay guys, we're back in. There we are, back in business. Right, that's quiet, huh? Okay. Oops, right, I want 16, 16 mil. There we go, 16 mil. And up this end, I'm gonna have around 18 mil. I'm just going to use this and get... Yeah, that's about do. Not going to be exact. I just want a slight taper to keep his leg. If you use a chisel like that, it's like having a skew. Slight taper. Now we're going to go for our knee joint now. Like I say, there's no measurements for this, I just look 
Uh, I would say his knee joint is going to be around here. So I'm going to go in there. And I'm going to go in there. I'm going to do a little V cut, making a simple leg. Like so. And the V cut here. And then we're just going to round that over, like that, round that over like there, round that over there. Right, there we go, I think that should be, uh, got to get a Right, there we go. Let's stop that. And now we've got to do another one. Right, that's going to be painted. So, as you see, I haven't even bothered to sand that. Don't even need to sand that. Right, I've got to make another one the same now. a little bit, right, tighten that up. Right, okay, let's go. doing this the other day I'll come off my tool rest. Bigger, that should do it. Right now, for speed, I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. rid of some of that bolt and then I'll bring it down. Be our slight taper. Have a look. Oh, I don't know, I might come down a bit too thin there. That one looks a bit thicker, but never mind, we'll go, we'll go with it at the moment. Right, so. Be there, be neat. 
Right, hang on, let me get up here. Right, I want to be there. And there. Okay. I came in a little bit slimmer on that one up there. And I'm a little bit higher on that. So that's all right. If I pop that one back on, I can just take that down a little bit. Take this one down a fraction. this slightly and this so if you don't get it dead right don't worry just adjust it slightly there we go okay right, there probably not the easiest way of measuring this i'd be better if i turned the lathe off and done it yeah i've got to come slightly right i can see that roll that there and this one's Come up slightly. There we go. Right, now we've got a matching. Okay. Just have a look at that. Yep, that looks all right. And that's far off of that. <laughs> There we go, right, okay. Sorry about that. That's our legs done. Yep, they're pretty good. That's our legs. Right. You can see that. Close enough. Right, okay. Now I've got to do the arm. Now I have already got one arm done. need that, I don't need the chuck on here now, just wanted to use it because it was a new chuck really, you get a new chuck you got to show that you needed it haven't you, right okay, most of my stuff I do offer this, this is fantastic these, right okay, Take that one out and put my step set in. Okay. Alright, I've marked this up for centre. Alright, I've put as you notice I've put some lines on here because I've already got one arm done. Because when I done the one the other day, I had him like the drummer I was going to do with two, I was going to do another drummer, but I thought I don't want another drummer. So uh, I kept one arm and made another right, a straight arm for that. So this one's got to have a straight arm now. I've already got this one. And all you do, when you do your straight arm, is just cut it at 45 and then turn it and glue it back on and that gives you a bent arm. So now I've just got to make another arm. Now I've already marked up on here. So I'm going to turn this to round first, so that's not going to do me any good whatsoever, those marks. So let's do it. Right, 
we've got to we've just got to basically turn this around. I'm just doing it like this because of time. It of time I want to get get on with it. So, but a quick quick go like that and gives you that clean finish. Just roll it over and get that skew cut. Okay. Sorry. Half an hour in. Right. Okay. Shouldn't be too bad. Right, look at that finish. Look, that is beautiful. Straight off the chisel there. Right now, I've got to put some marks on. So, right, I'm coming down a bit because I've got waste on the end of this. I'm going to have. So, that's that bit. That's that bit. That's where my arm ends. So, when I come back over, I go from the short bit, which would be uh, there. Right, so that's his cuff, and that's his hand. And that gives me two waste bits. So what I will do is come in there now with a parting tool, so I can get some marks. And this I'm gonna use a thin parting tool. Right, here we go. So, that's my waste. So I want to come there, right, I'm going to go down here for his arm. What have I got? Yep, down for his arm. His arm's a little bit thin, so we're all right there. And I've got a uh, right, cuff. It's going to be there. And this is going to be his hand. Okay. Right, and obviously I've got to get down to these diameters as well. So, right, we're going to quickly do that with this. So, uh, first off, that's going to be the diameter for there. And that. Right, let me just. Have my five by one, so just put that. I'll do that all at that diameter. Right, okay, so now we've just got a not much this stuff. Now we've got to get this diameter in here. Okay. So now I've got to go even further on this bit. So the actual diameter is arm now. There I am. Oh look at that, that was a good guess on there. <laughs> I'm already there with it. Right, so that's his cuff. 
That's it done. Right now, bottom end, because there's obviously a slight taper. But what I want to do is get the thickness of this cuff. Yeah, All right, so I'm not going, I'll take the other yeah. end. Okay. <laughs> That's the thing with being number gets, isn't it? <laughs> That's it. Let me just check this. Here I am. This is and that's his cuff. Yeah. It's going to be his cuff. And now we've got to go down here. And his arm. So now I'll get the measurement of his arm. There. Other hand. Sorry. <laughs> Other hand. <laughs> there we go, that's his arm. That's the thickness of his arm. That's his cuff there. Get the measurement to where his hand is. So, uh, oh sorry, I'm here. Yeah. There. <laughs> there, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah. So, right, that's where it's coming from. Here. That's it. Right, okay. That's going to be his hand. So we bring that down to that. That's all the waste down there. Right, okay. It's going to be where his uh, hand is. And he's sharpening. Right, that's the trouble when you have things you've got to sharpen. Can't buy a better seed, no sharpening. <laughs> right, let me get rid of those. Let's bring this down now. Let's start doing his arm. Down. The same as you would with a skew. There we go. Roll that over there. Roll that over. That's already rolled over. It's having a nice, a nice crisp edge there. Like so. Right, we've got that. Right, roll that over. Roll this bit over. And here. Right, uh. Just want to get this out of the way. 
get a little bit of that out of the way. I would need to come over with his hand, see? So what I'm going to do is turn it over to a detail chisel. the room to part off and I just went flat for the parting off give me that chisel uh, right, this part and talk to me I want to sharpen it up Right now, just let me check that before I go any further. I think I need to just come around on that. Right there, that's it. Yep, that do. That'll do me, I reckon. Right, a little bit of sanding on that hand there. Parted. That's it, I'm not parting it right off. I'll stop it at that. Use my little saw. That's there. That's it. Now I've got my saw stuck. That's it. There we go. <laughs> right, break that off. Right, there's his arm. That should be all right for there. Cuff might be slightly bigger, but that's going to be standing down by the side, so that's all all right. So, there's his arms. Now I've got to do his hat. Very quickly. How are we doing on time? 44 minutes. 44 minutes. Right, this shouldn't take too long. Get that going. Right, I'm just So I wouldn't normally use my uh, 
I wouldn't normally rough down like that, but I'm just doing this for speed at the moment. Alright, now then, I'm just going to bring my calipers up, get a measurement of the head. So I'll bring it back over in a sec. Right, okay. Close enough for that. Alright, okay. I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to go to a round chisel. Now, looking at him, I want the hat to be just slightly taller than the head. So, I'm going to go about. Mm, yeah, just slightly taller than the head because I'm going for the Busby type shape. Just remember the Busby goes out that way and round. <laughs> so, doing the demonstration. Busby goes up and around that way, so it's that sort of shape. So that's why I'm going in here. Part and tool. Right. Handle's dropped right the way down. See it right, I need to uh, clear some of this out of the way. Without going through it. It's not a flat top, it's a little slightly rounded top. Not that it over matters because it's going to be covered in fur. <laughs> when I think about it. That's enough of that. Don't spend too much time on sanding. Right, there we go. Saws up in. And just let that pressure off a bit. There we go. That's gone. Right, and I should clean that up just on the sander a little bit.
preparato qua sono proprio noi Let's go sit on the top of there. Right, okay guys. I'm going to go the other side of my lathe. So I know you stay there. Okay. I'll take that face shield off. Alright, if I can we'll put these tools back <laughs> very quickly. Mm. Without cutting Lisa with them, yeah. she's sitting right, right behind me. Okay, put those all up there, out the way. Right, I'll sneak past here. Oh. Right. Okay. Right, what I'm going to be doing. Give me a little table down there. Eh? So I've got my bed extension. There, I can just push that out of the way now. Got my bed extension for my lathe. So, right, okay. Here we are, legs. Let's get rid of all that rubbish. Yeah. Now, I'm not gluing this because. Oh, sorry, I've got my other bits behind you. Can you I'm okay. Sorry, I had all my bits put behind there, <laughs> so. Right, okay, I've got that. I need a little hole in there. A little three mil hole, I'm just gonna drill in the bottom of here. I'm not actually gluing this together at the moment because it's easier to paint them if they're not glued. So the dowels will go in the legs. Can you see all this? Yep. So obviously they will glue in on the stand. Long, let get a shorter one. There's a shorter one, thank you. Right, so they will go in there. So it's better to paint these, paint all the bits first before we actually put everything together. It works, works better. Right, that goes in there. His feet, like I said, will glue on there. So that will be his feet. Hat goes on there. His arm, there will be a little little peg i just drew a hole in there like i said i'm not doing it at the moment and i just use a little piece of this it fits in the hole the same same size so we'll have a arm down there and an arm there and there's our uh, there's our nutcracker and then this one because he's got his arm bent there he's going to have i made a little sword he's got a little hole underneath there That'll pop in there. There'll be a little hole put in there and he will stand and hold his sword like so. Okay, and he will stand like that. Obviously the hole's gonna be the other way around. Yeah, around. obviously the hole's gonna be <laughs> that way round on the arm. But we'll paint them before we put this together because it's more awkward if you got to paint them. But there we go, guys. There's the Nutcracker. Thank you for joining me. 54 minutes. 50, Pete, I said I would do it under an hour. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I did say to Pete it would be under an hour. So there you go. There's a challenge for you, Peter. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, guys. And I'll see you on the next one. I'll show you this when this one's all painted up.
Toodle pip. Bye, guys.